Now, we heard that a little up the ways from this most southern region, a bit up towards Kona, is a very special fruit stand brimming with goodness that we really needed to explore. In no time, we were there. It's a little farm food stand, the kind you see tended to by Ma and Pa. Its name, South Kona Fruit Stand. With the goods plucked off the farm just this morning, locals, visitors, and anyone else in between get a kick out of this place. And it isn't odd to come face to face with a fruit you've never seen before. Take a look. Beth, the owner, gave us the lowdown. The farm was established by a Japanese family after World War II. Really? And uh, it's a really mature orchard. We have over 700 fruit trees on six and a quarter acres. And throughout different times of the year, there's every fruit that you can think of. Really? Have like you? what? Tell uh, me some. Like egg fruit. Egg, egg fruit. fruit. Tastes like sweet egg yolks. Really? <laughs> Uh, we tried durian here, but we couldn't grow that one, not enough rain. And it's probably better scare away the customers. Uh-huh. What a nifty little place this is. And then, to take things up a notch or two, down the counter, past the avocados, dried mango, and papaya, is a display case of handmade soaps from Hawaiian Bath and Body. We do have customers that come here year after year because this is their favorite soap, and they come back actually asking for specific soap flavors because they are so good. People come in and they love picking up each one and smelling each one and looking at all the ingredients because there's no soap like it anywhere else on earth. Hmm, that's a mighty big claim, nice lady from South Kona. So we're on special report on Oahu to the former sugar plantation town of Waialua, where owners Deb and Jerry Driscoll run the team that create those well-loved soaps. What we do is um, cold process soap making, and that's um, making soap without cooking anything. So we don't cook any of the ingredients and therefore the soaps retain all of the medicinal properties and the aromatherapy benefits of the ingredients. We use a four part vegetable oil base, so no lard, um, no tallow, it's like it's all cooking, or um, yeah, cooking grade, the kind of oils you eat, olive oil, coconut oil, soybean oil, and the catalyst to make soap is the lye. So when you add lye to the oils, they mix together, and that mixing together is called saponifying. And when what's happening is the two different molecules, the lye molecules and the oil molecules, are combining to make a new thing, and that new thing is soap. The next step is we take the soap after it's been saponified in the tub and the essential oils have been made, added and thoroughly mixed, and then we pick that pot up, about 50 pounds, and pour it into a tray. A wooden tray lined with some uh, freezer paper so the soap won't stick to the wood. Pour it in there and wait for 24 hours without disturbing it and insulate that thing so that it gets the natural reaction, heats that slab of soap overnight and uh, after one week then we cut it into bars. That big slab which weighs almost 50 pounds like Jerry said, those get run through a, like, like, a, like a cheese cutter, those get run through and so from the, from the big slab you get individual loaves and then those loaves get pushed through another um, soap cutter, again like multiple cheese cutters that Jerry's made and you push that loaf through and from that loaf you get the individual bars. And then those individual bars go through another curing process for another five weeks or so. We like to do, from again, from start to finish six weeks. I know some companies do start to finish 21 days. So we take it a little step further, wait a little bit longer so our soaps are that much more mild, that much harder, which makes a longer lasting bar.